Chandler experiments with a cold open. The Supreme Court really shakes things up, and Cass stops by to talk state question 788. This is Political Bedlam. Hello, Reese. Hi, how you doing? I am doing good. How has your week been? Man, I mean, not not so bad so far. You know, feeling feeling a little groggy just because I make poor choices. Mm. But, you know, you live and you learn. You live and you learn. I so agree with that. Stay hydrated. Stay okay. hydrated. It's good for you. But yeah. The summer heat, you know, it'll get you. It doesn't mix with drinking well. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. But, you know, again, live and learn. So. Live and learn. Exactly. exactly. Well, I wanted to kind of do an offbeat topic today. And uh, we are recording in a new location, as we have been lately. I'll make sure we both face the microphone so we can hear when we talk. you got to try new things. Switch yeah. But I wanted to do a, a new um, kind of idea, and I wanted to do it on conspiracies. Um, everyone likes a good old conspiracy. I like lizard people. I like, I like the really far out there ones, too, but I have one that's a little bit more politically mainstream and covers what we talk about. Um, I briefly mentioned it to you before the show. Um, I called it Trojan Trump. Um, and I guess the premise... Does this have anything to do with Trojan condoms? No, it does not, unfortunately. Okay. That would make it a lot more fun. Trojan condoms, if you want to come on and maybe sponsor this episode, <laughs> you can, but it's not going to be about your product. Uh, we're talking about the... But we will we will say your product name a lot. Yeah, we'll say a lot. Yeah. We'll say Trojan several times. Yes, yes. So. Well, um, essentially, right. it's that... Uh, the gist of the theory is that Trump is a Democratic plant who has come to conflate outrageous rhetoric with pretty normal conservative policies. Um, To kind of put a finer point on that, and I guess my own words, is that Trump has governed, for the most part, his policy um, has been pretty middle-of-the-line fiscal conservative. But meanwhile, the things that he says and the optics that he puts on things and just the carelessness with which he enacts some of these policies... Is I, couldn't couldn't be anything but designed to elicit outrage, no. and uh, we're talking about a man who's been a Democrat for thirty years or so. He's probably given a billion or two dollars in total to Democratic candidates. Who is all of a sudden, since two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, a Republican who wants to run for the Republican Party, um, and is now in office. Um, I don't know if I fully believe this, but it's a fun one to entertain. But that, the, is a, that is a fun one to entertain for sure. Could, could, I, yeah, I do. I do appreciate the idea that, that Donald Trump is kind of playing this this next level psychology game, right? Where mm-hmm. he just like is running on a ticket that he genuinely doesn't care about, because we can all tell it. He's not really in it for the politics, right? He doesn't right. really care about people. Um, and if he does, like, he's not being genuine about what he's saying in the slightest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. Like, if he did have some kind of like cool ulterior motive i think that that would be great if he's being intentionally subversive right um having said that i think that this is this is a bad motive if he has this one it it is and i I do think that uh donald trump was more or less inevitable or a caricature of of him just because i've I've been kind of looking at at a few like past interviews right like pre-donald trump interviews right and everything seems so quaint now right but um People were kind of clamoring for someone who was a little bit more outrageous, right? Mm-hmm. Like even like Bill Maher and Stephen Colbert, like they would, you know, kind of be harsh on uh, former Republican and Democratic uh, candidates for not being uh, aggressive enough with each other during debates, and and you know they, they just wanted someone to tell it like it is and like be themselves, and like whenever Donald Trump came about, you know, that was more or less an inevitable thing that was going to take hold. So right, right. No, I, I think. I don't know. That, I feel like they were looking specifically when they mentioned that. I remember, I remember seeing those interviews, too. Like, they I were, still don't think he wanted to win, necessarily. No. You know? I think the comedic pun is just on your side note. Uh, I think they preferred a conservative, specifically a conservative candidate that they can kind of make fun of. I mean, if we're being honest, like there was a lot of pretty rich joke areas around Obama. They just weren't willing to go there. Sure. Whether if it was out of actual partisan, re- or like partisan uh, behavior or if it was actually just respect for first African American president, but I mean, yeah. there's so many things. Just just the way he talked. I mean, we like to talk about how like he's he's uh, a great public speaker, and he is. But it's just like 
I, there's there's a formula to it that like makes I think the more average person who doesn't listen to speeches think it's way smarter than it is. It's, that's that's fair. That's I, what, I, I, I I talk in short choppy utterances. Yeah, and, it was, and it I was, use a pause. It was a lot more it's difficult just to make fun of him though, just because uh, the, the, his predecessor, right, like was so easy to make fun of as well. True, and like I don't know, like it's it's difficult to kind of. I I do think a little bit of that though is a lot of trying to make fun of Bush, and not much trying to make fun of Obama. That's fair. But, I just like in hindsight there wasn't a whole lot to like make fun of, right, like. Everything that he tried to do was like ballsy, and like you could call it stupid, but at the same time, like it's it's still what could very easily be argued as progress, right? Um, and that was kind of that was kind of his thing. I don't I don't see a whole lot of like good arguments. That they are not social made. faux pas. Right um, now, so well, um, I don't know. I, I would say getting back to our, our topic, um, I think it's a lot a, of that is just the optics of it. Um, I think Trump is governing. Like I said, he's trying to mix more middle-of-the-line centrist republic policies with an outrageous face that is designed to conflate the two. Oh, you believe in this, like tax reform? Well, Trump is the one who pushed tax reform, and Trump is a woman abuser and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's designed to conflate the two. Like, all the things that we've been clamoring for since about 2008, conservatives that are pretty middle-of-the-line, to, I mean, you're more partisan pundits like Sean Hannity, all the things we've been wanting, Trump has been doing. It's been like, it'd be the same thing that Rand Paul would have been doing, same thing as Ted Cruz would have been doing. Uh, just, just things like nixing the individual mandate, um, just in terms of consumer confidence and GDP growth, cutting regulations. These are all things they've been talking about for a long time. Yeah, um, but I mean, there are a lot of additional things, too, that he's doing that I, I don't think would have been done by anyone, right? Like the whole, like, uh, the immigration policies are kind of ridiculous. And just, like, the, the, the rhetoric that he's the, using, the, that, again, that, is... Yeah, the rhetoric, yeah, that's, that's more of, like, the just designed to, to outrage. Not the policies of what he's doing, but how he's presenting it. The same thing, I think, with the immigration thing. Well, I do feel it, like the policies themselves are also pretty extreme, right? Like, some. Um, like, they, they never, the whole kids in cages thing, right? Like, you can't really paint that in a positive light. No other well, president has done that, right? Well, I mean, there, like, was, there wasn't Japanese legislation to put kids in cages. It was uh, it was a it was a zero tolerance of, policy that triggered a mechanism right. over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like this is still very poor planning, right? And, like this this would not have happened in in basically any other administration. Like, that that feeds into what I'm happen. saying. He could have he could have done a zero uh, tolerance policy. He could have done more extreme border vetting without being so careless as to make these kids get detained with other parents. You feel like any other Republican who like knew what they were doing and were trying to preserve the party would make sure they weren't doing that, if not for optics' sake okay. alone. So you, you feel like if anything, like Donald Trump is being so intentionally subversive to just wreck the Republican uh, Yeah, party. on certain things. But okay. like all, all of the policies are fairly what conservatives would call logical policies. He's just doing them in such a way that he's just eliciting outrage. And he's, I mean, if, if that makes sense. I mean, for the, he's like he... As he's like governed, not how he's spoken, not how he's acted. Sure, uh, I, he's it's it's pretty centrist conservative. It's pretty close to Bush, actually. I, don't know, I do feel like like I I, I I don't I don't agree just because like I, I feel like he is everything that he tries to do good. Um, like it, like like people are trying to give him credit, right? Like the North Korea thing, right? Like he, he went, he actually like tried to to make some kind of people. Like people were excited about him going and meeting with with Kim Jong. And and now it, it, like nothing really came of it, right? It was very yeah, really yeah. No, no, I mean the meeting that they had was an agreement to continue talks, and it's a later date, I think, in this month. I, I don't know, man. Like uh, I just feel like in terms of actual progress, like uh, he's just making progress for himself. I don't know. I just but that's not true. You know, people aren't paying attention to this part though. Uh, I'm just and we are the United States is at full employment as of last year. There are more people that have jobs that are looking for jobs in the market. We have an abundance of jobs for the first time since 2002. I was researching this earlier because I was just trying to, because people talk about all these broad things like the economy, the economy, Trump's so good with the economy. And a lot of the facts actually do reflect that. Um, GDP growth, of course, uh, Obama barely cracks 2%, 2% one time, I think, in his candidacy. It's usually 1%. 1% is fine, but the GDP has, has gone up 3% under Trump. And that a lot of people, that analysts and economists weren't saying that was going to be possible. Um, I mean, is this attributed directly to his policies, though? Yeah, I would say yes, and just in terms of the stock market specifically reflects consumer confidence, and I think that consumer confidence has gone up under Trump. I don't know if that has anything to do with Trump personally, right, or if it's what, more I don't, with, I don't get how there could be a correlation there. Right? I, I like, think it's more to do with like Republicans being in office and that there will be less regulation, so it's better to invest in the market. I don't think it's Trump specifically. I think it's, I hey, like the conservative ideal is back in charge, okay. so... 
will be able to invest more money better without being regulated as much. See, I mean, like, I... I Okay. Like, if the economy itself is, like, picking up, that's all well and good, right? But, uh, I don't know, like, the inevitable social backlash of this seems pretty destructive. What are you referring to? Huh? What are you referring to? And what, the social, social backlash? backlash? So, social backlash uh, just, for what? To Trump or to... Yeah, just to Trump and, like, his administration as a whole, right? Just, like, how divisive it's been and, like, how... That's intentional. I really feel like that might be intentional. I mean, like, I, and that's the thing. It's like, I do kind of hold out hope that, like, if anything, this is just going to make people have more serious discussions about politics, right? Because, like, now they actually have to, like, sit and think for a second about, you know, what their opinion is as opposed to just, like, spouting rhetoric because it used to be so centrist, right? And, like, mm-hmm. now he's so crazy, and you can't just, like, agree with the guy. You know? I, I guess my main theory in bringing it up as a conspiracy theory, my main fear, so to speak... Yeah, what is, are his is, motives for is this? That, like- well, if, if in this conspiracy, it would be to completely destroy and malign average conservative ideals and rhetoric by tying it to someone who is outlandish, sometimes racist, sometimes misogynist. Uh, that, that's what I think is the end goal, is okay. to... So to, I mean, but to you tie Republican policy to this just crazy person. I mean, that seems fair, but like at the same time, uh, like Republican policies have, have, have flip flopped several times in the last like 40, 50 years, right? Like, I mean, like the issues themselves are just conflated with with the the party. Uh, I said Republican. I, I should have cons- referred to conservative. The conservative movement kind of started in the seventies, sixties, and is kind of now still the modern. Because you're right. Like like fifty years ago, things were right. way different. I'm like saying, I, mean, I, I do believe that like people are starting to to dis. I, I guess, like, uh, disassociate uh, conservatism with republicanism, though. And I think that, like, if, any, if Trump is doing anything, he's doing that. He's making people realize that, like... Do you really think that? Because I see yeah. Republican and conservative used interchangeably I, 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 Well, yeah, I do, too. But uh, there, there are a lot of, like, uh, I, I don't know, like, I, the people that I talk to at work, at least, like, I, a, re- a lot of really old conservative people come to my job, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they they are embarrassed with, with the administration, the way that it's being handled right now. Um, and so they are making it very clear that they, they are conservative, but they are not Republican, and they cannot get behind this. Do you get a chance to talk any policy with them? Because I would agree I don't like the way it's being handled. And kind of what I was relating to is I, li- I like how it's being governed. I don't like how it's being handled. Yeah. And I think a lot of older conservatives w- would agree with that. And, of course, there are parts I don't like where he's governing as well. But I'm saying overall, um, I-, I think most conservatives uh, – Typically, and I know Cash won't agree with this, he considers him extremist, but, but Ben Shapiro was pretty centrist. Is he? For, okay. for the Republican. He's the center of the Republican. He's not out there. He's, he's not He's not like centrist centrist. That's fair. That's but fair. he's a center Republican opinion. Okay. He, he was a never-Trumper. He's only gradually on board with Trump. And he's the same thing. He likes how we're governing. He hates how it's being handled. Yeah. And I think most rational conservative voices are, are, are agreeing with that right now. Um, I, I don't know. I... Um, I hope there, there are still some things holding out that could be considered big wins. I mean, regardless of how we're talking right now, history will remember the man. And there, there are things that he can do to where if he gets them accomplished, history will remember him fondly no matter right. what. Right, yeah, no, absolutely. And Such as can, the North Korea. Right, yeah, if he, can, if he can, like, pull some, like, crazy feather out, you know, and, like, it, it happens to be great, you know, like, it, it props, it, it's, it's good for everyone, right? You know, the rising tide raises all ships, as it were. So, I mean, like, if he can't actually do positive stuff in this country, like, power to it. But, like... Uh, I just don't see him doing anything intentionally good, right? Okay. Like, that's... You and, think, are you more one of the he's fumbling in a success people? Kind of, yeah. I mean, like, uh, just, like, given, like, the history that, that uh, we've seen, of, at least it's what's been portrayed, right, throughout his, like, business holdings that he's had in the past and just, like, um, just stuff that he's tried to get off the ground and, like, has failed. Like, how does a casino fail, right? Like, I don't understand, like... Well, it kind of just because Jersey failed, Atlantic City failed. I don't, I don't Like, they're just, like, uh... I agree that he's not a great businessman, but I, I think it needs to be looked at through the perspective of he's a man who actively tried the market, and he's a man that, that lost with the recession, lost with a lot of other things. Like, he's, he's lost money. I, a lot of times when people refer to him not being as a good businessman, and they're, they're right in saying this, and but not, it's not just Not just not a good businessman, but a specifically shady businessman. Right? No, shady who, for who, sure. Who does who does some pretty, like... I, I would say terrible. average businessman. A lot of people, when they say he's a bad businessman, and they write the quote this, but I think it's narrow, they'll reference the John Oliver thing, saying that if he just put his money that he inherited from his father into an account, he'd be worth more now mm-hmm. because of compound interest. Mm-hmm. And while that's a fair point, I mean, he's still a man that... Uh, I don't know, tr- tried his hand in the market on a variety of things. I think he's an average businessman, not not a bad businessman. I De- make- definitely not the good businessman that people like to claim. Yeah, I, I would still make a make a, an argument that he's a, he's a good a- advertiser more than a businessman. He's, he's a brand. He's yeah. a really good good at it, just selling his name. He's which- he's kind of uh, especially in the nineties and two thousands. He he made Trump, so to speak, synonymous with just opulence. And- right. 
over the top rich guy. <laughs> Golden success and John Mulaney flashing. talks about like he, Donald Trump is what a homeless person thinks a really rich guy is. Right. Yeah. Put my name on a building and all that because I'm some stakes. He's basically a cartoon character. Yeah. You know? Like that's that's what. I don't know. I don't know. And like, is that is that what what we want? Do we want things that simple? Do we really want cartoon characters? You know, just like telling us how to how to handle our policy because that seems so one sided, right? Like, you need to have someone who is a little bit deeper than that. More. I uh, I think part of it um, together. Che- checks and balances. I mean, hopefully, a lot of the Republican administration because um, the actual like- power behind the throne is is still calling some of the uh, shots, and I, I expect it to be so, just because the policy for the most part has been pretty middle of the line. Right, but usually the the head does seem to at least have his own opinion, right, or yes, at least portray his own opinion. Yeah, and he doesn't really do that at all. Like mm-hmm. no one knows where he stands on any particular issue until like the issue is kind of being taken care of. I, I think and then I think he tweets about it. his business successes, the ones that he's had, he's had by remaining flexible, and I think that is something he's carried over in his presidency, and he remains flexible in his positions and opinions. Like I will side with whatever I think is going to be most successful, you, hopefully to the country, but usually it's to public opinion. Yeah. Like he'll cow to most, sure, most anything. Sure. Um, but I mean that's any politician, right? Because they, they uh, on on some level like need to keep their constituency happy. But I mean like, but not to the level Trump does, because Trump is not a trained politician. He's not quite thing, handled right? with such grace. And he doesn't have like he almost like his his voter base almost seems to to gain fervor whenever you know like uh, he upsets the, the the majority of the people in the country. So it's like uh, it's not necessarily disadvantageous for him to to be PC politically correct, as it were. So, right. Well, um, uh, talking about checks and balances a second ago, that kind of brings me to another thing. Uh, another thing. I need to talk slower. I've been realizing that on podcasts uh, lately. Um, more clearly and slower. Uh, I came into your house, and you were watching something about uh, SCOTUS, the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think that's topical. I'm going to try and get on a point where we release these episodes a day or two after recording, and that way we can... It Stay remain topical. topical. Yeah. yeah. So okay. sometimes it may release like a week later. We just released the immigration one and it's okay. kind of off now. But hopefully we'll get this one out at least three or four days tops. But uh, let's, let's talk uh, Justice Kennedy's uh, announced retirement. Right, yeah, July July 31st, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, it, does this mean that he, uh, Trump can appoint, appoint whoever he wants to the Supreme Court? And then... Like, because that's a yeah. lifelong position, isn't it? Mm-hmm. A Supreme Court justice is a lifelong term. I'm pretty sure it needs to be confirmed by some committee. But, okay. Uh, but I mean, uh, at the point where the Republicans control everything, like, correct? And the committee is going to say, yeah. Correct. Um, if you if you remember, Obama um, tried to appoint Merrick Garland in yeah. 2017 and was blocked by a Republican majority. Yeah, Mitch McConnell uh, was pretty. Which I I, yeah, I, I understand that. the logic to that to appoint uh, the object or the art. It was like uh, he's a lame duck president. He's on his way out. He can just appoint whoever he wants with no real lasting political consequences for himself. And they believe that having political consequences for who you nominate will hopefully pressure you into making a better nomination. Right. Um, right. I, I see the logic to that. Um, I, don't I mean, know but I, at the same time... Well, like, the Democrats are now making that same argument about Trump coming up to uh, the midterms in a year or so that he should not be the one to appoint Kennedys. Right, yeah. Like, I don't right. know if it's going to make a difference yeah, because Republicans can. have the House... Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think the Republicans at least need to entertain uh, the notion. Um, I wouldn't say Trump is quite as a lame duck because he could technically serve one more term. Right. But, I mean, if you did that to Obama, you at least need to hear out the opposition when they do the exact same thing back to you. So maybe we'll have some good dialogue on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, Kennedy's retirement is a big deal. He was a swing vote, basically. He was conservative. But, I mean, he basically the only Democrat left, right? No, I mean, he, he was, uh, I think he was technically a Republican, but he was, really? a, okay. yeah, he was he was known as the swing vote because, I mean, he would side with the liberal justices way more than any of his other fellow. Okay. They usually voted on party ideal lines, and he was the, he, Just unpredictable. Kind of he was a wild card. Voted on issues, basically. Yeah, he, uh, he affirmed Roe v. Wade in 92. Okay. He ruled on unions in 2007. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, a lot of people are viewing this, a lot of people on the left particularly are freaking out because he was the swing vote, he kind of guaranteed that there was at least some impartiality. Some semblance of partisan, bipartisanship. And, and now Trump is, is coming in to elect his new uh, justice, and I mean, as he's wont to do, I mean, sure. there have been times all throughout our history where the Supreme Court has been particularly stacked, conservative or liberal, just based on who dies or who retires. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it, it will have fairly big uh, implications. Uh, I mean, who who are like actual potential nominees for this though, right? I mean, because he can nominate whoever he wants. He can. Right? I heard people um, 
no one official, no one among the punditry. The Supreme Court Justice Steve Bannon, maybe? No, no, not, not quite that far. Not anyone among the punditry or like any like elected officials, but some people have been tossing Ted Cruz's name out there. So um, I don't know if that'd be as much as to get Ted Cruz, who's a constitutional Republican, on the court as it would be to remove him as a political rival. But um, okay. we we shall see. I I don't think I don't he would like be Trump a bad pick. Rivals. He wouldn't be a bad pick for some things. Um, he's a pretty far right conservative pick. Um, I think it might be better to go somewhat more of a libertarian. Um, view uh a rand paul so to speak I, not rand paul obviously i don't think rand paul has any interest in it no. ted cruz has shown interest in the past but someone like rand paul someone with more libertarian like not necessarily swing vote like still is very liberty minded small government sure, but i mean sure. someone who's like oh i'm not gonna ban abortion i'm not going to repeal gay rights right because ted cruz might do either and that's that's kind of the thing that, that's i think what's scaring a lot of left-wing people i guess is all this social reform that is, or progress, if you want, is potentially going to be undone, right? I mean... Potentially. I could see um, Roe v. Wade being overturned. Um, <laughs> I could not see gay marriage. Not, I couldn't see it being overturned for being uh, reality. I should have said, I see it being manipulated with add-on um, regulations sure, yeah. and add-on rulings. I don't think anything will happen to gay marriage. I think if any that even comes up, I think the backlash will be so intense, and I'll be among them. And I think it'll be deservedly so. You you touch gay rights, I mean, right to marriage. We're we're I mean, a lot of people will leave the conservative cause and will definitely side with the Democrats on that yeah. one. I uh, myself among them. Um, I would love to hear what Milo Yiannopoulos has to say about that. If they, yeah, <laughs> you know, they touch the, the whole gay rights issue. Yeah, I would. Uh, he'd be an interesting one to hear from on that. <clears throat> um. All right, Reese, we're off of break, and me and Cass, we're talking about adding some more segments, some, like, fusion of pop culture and politics, mm-hmm. some, like, just fun things to do. Um, we're talking about it at work, and um, we were going to do it soon, but he's not here because he has more important things to do, so forget him, I'm doing it with you. Yay! So, what, one of the fun things we're doing is just knowledge of movies and comic books or whatever, okay. what political affiliation would a famous uh, character be? Okay. And why? All right. I like that. I'm, like I'm, I'm going to give you the first one. I want to okay. hear you just off, off, the, off the dumb. Right. He, Reese has not been prepped for this. Batman. Mm. Oh, man. I mean, libertarian, pretty pretty sure, right? Like, he'd be, he be, like, pretty standoffish, like, do your own thing, like, stay away from my, my cave. I'm going to kill you if you come near my cave. Right, and, and I'm gonna go out and mess up everyone else's cave and take their stuff and make my cave better. That and sounds that sounds like a very different Batman than what I know. But it sounds like an awesome Batman. I would yeah, watch I, that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine what what Batman's. Political I, I, I would think would he'd be. lean right as well. Yeah, um, pretty pretty far right, I imagine. Yeah, but just because he's so independent. I mean, he, he's still though a very empathetic, caring individual. So maybe, maybe center right. I mean, he goes out. Every day and saves people. Whether actually, I guess you get a debate there on whether he wants to save people or whether he just wants to beat up right. worse people. Right. Yeah. He's just trying to you know exercise his own demons and not necessarily like make society. They're better. doing jumping jacks. He's exercising them hard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hard. Uh, making them do burpees. Burpees. Um, okay. So uh, pretty easy one. Let's go, Captain America. Captain America. I feel like he'd be pretty pretty liberal. That sounds that sounds like a, a very freedom like liberty. Oriented kind of, yeah. No, I like, but but classic, classic Democrat. Right? Yeah, like, he's nice he's bottom choice. left. I think he's bottom left. He like values freedom and and like people, like, yeah, human like, rights, freedom he, and human rights. Exactly. He wants everyone. He, this is like nineteen twenties era. Like he wants everyone to have the right to vote. He wants like civil. He's rights. paving the way for FDR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants civil rights before their time. Like this is you know like Captain America was. Yeah. Interesting side note. Um, I don't know if you knew this. It's some people in comics know. FDR was the one who gave Captain America his shield oh. in, in the comics. Okay, did not know that. Canon. I like yeah, that. Canon. I like that. So. They could definitely see him being very, like, but but not afraid to, to shoot a gun either, right? Like, right, right, right. World War II was just right around the corner. So. Still still 1920s, 1920s Democrats. So right. Like, <clears throat> probably had guns. Pretty hard. Yeah, no, I mean, like, they, they, lived, a, they lived a rough life. That, you know, the Depression was no joke. So. I mean, okay, if you've seen Black Panther, that's one I wanted to yeah. do. That's, that was an interesting movie because everyone liked it, and a lot of people on the left seemed like really go out of the way to like it and see yeah. it, and it was a great movie. I don't fault them. 
But just because, like, I, I get it, representation in film, like, uh, it's a largely black film, and like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a good thing, it's a, it's a great movie, yeah. representation's important. But the f- message t- taught about Wakanda, I mean, is is pretty pretty right wing. Yeah, pretty, it really kind of is. It's very, like, uh, very isolationist, very... Uh, even at the end, they still don't really do much besides, like, I mean, provide aid and, like, show up, like, sometimes, and mm-hmm. it's... Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know. That's 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 interesting. I don't really think of, uh, of 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 Wakanda as a as a political system, which you should, right? Because I mean, like they've been there since I don't remember the canon. Like they've been there for like three thousand years, though, right? Yeah. Just kind of like yeah. isolated from everything else. It's interesting because they're nationalist and isolationist, but not for like literally any wrong ideals. They're 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 like we are better than you. This rock landed here. We are way more advanced in technology than you are, and. You can't handle this technology. Whether that's right or wrong, it's not an impure motive. Right. Yeah. Like unlike all the other nationalists and isolationists in this country, it's so sometimes they're like, just like keep everyone else safe. Yeah, some of nationalism and isolationism are associated with like xenophobia or sure. just like I don't know oppressive regimes. And like they're none of those things. Like they just I don't know. They hit. They just are hiding away because they're like you can't handle what we got going. Right. Uh, I, I think that's interesting. I, I do think it is. It is still. I still think T'Challa uh, was. Was kind of right wing and traditional, and, yeah. and I feel like him and Aquaman would be pretty pretty similar in that respect. I think him and Atlantis, would, you know, like that you could correlate Wakanda and Atlantis, maybe. When, when's that movie coming out? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, pretty soon. I want to see. Uh, I don't remember his name. Giant, giant Khaleesi, Khaleesi banger. Oh yeah, the DC movie Aquaman. Um, I don't remember his, the actor's name. Uh, it's, uh, Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I, I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Um, yeah, that should be a good one. Um, Superman. Superman. I, I feel like he'd be a pretty annoying conservative. I, 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 I yeah. I, I don't. I think Superman knows he's knows he's better than you. Yeah, he does. Like in he's, a bad way, not the Wakanda way. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, he doesn't want to help you. He just. <laughs> uh, I'll help in general. You're in his way. <laughs> I'll help in general, but. Um, we need to think of more little like word games to play like this. Yeah, no, they, they, these are fun. Um, give me one. I'm not okay. Spider Man. I mean, um, I think Spider Man leans left. I think Spider Man yeah. is liberal, but not pretty leftist. educated. I mean, he's. I think he's educated. He lives in New York. He sees people from all walks of life, and has like a real yeah. sense of empathy and understands class struggle okay. and whatnot. But I don't think he's like radical left. Like we got to overthrow the system. Like it's sure. broken. So to speak, he's like, he still believes in the process. Time. Yeah, he's not—he's not Antifa. He's like Occupy he's Wall like Street. Pro incremental change. Well, no, those are pretty similar, uh, just in terms of like actual protesting. I'd say Antifa and like I don't know people who like post about it on Facebook and put the filters on. Like, he, like he cares and he's—he's he's doing the right thing. Except he's Spider Man, so he's like actually doing something. He's right. not just like, hey, I voted for someone he's important. Physically making progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think he's comfortable in his liberal ideals. I just don't think he's leftist. Okay. Well, how about Charles Xavier? Hmm. Now that's an interesting one. Because he can make people vote for him, right? True, Charles. Um, Charles. You would instantly think would lean left just because of the human rights comparison, so to speak. X Men, like, kind of being a metaphor for being homosexual or minority in the 60s mm-hmm. and 70s. Mm-hmm. But I think it'd be really hard to tell because we're talking about a man who can literally just absorb knowledge from any, from any person when he's, like, walking out in the world. So the level of things that he knows probably put him. I like get an intellect level that is like outside of my level to guess what he thinks. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? I, I would think and I would hope since I lean more right and I, I, I think a lot of the minds in history that have been more brilliant, right, better, are more right, that maybe he would be centrist and maybe lean right. But I think it would be really hard to tell with someone that that's smart and like you, you can't possibly even know how his mind works. Right. Yeah, he's, he has multiple minds at that point. That's one thing that I've always like found kind of fascinating about Charles Xavier is, is he not technically a hive mind, right? Because, I mean, he can like control, adapt, and, you know, basically mm-hmm. be in everyone else's body at the same yeah. time, like anyone around him, so, I don't know, I, I, I like him as a character. As a politician, though, I feel like, I'd be fine with him ruling the planet. Yeah. I think I'd be alright with that. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I think, you know, on some level, he could know what everyone really needs, right? You know, that, that's, that's true. Whether we knew what we needed or not. Like, we, I don't know if we necessarily want him, we could just, like, chain him to the Cerebro machine, right. and he could constantly tell us what everyone wants. Okay. We could just use him as a computer. That's nice. We like an Xavier. It just, this just got sadistic. We yeah. could just use him as a computer, just hook him up. Hmm. Um, 
Have we considered doing that? Like cloning people? Like getting really good at cloning brains and then just using those brains as computers? Um, Cause I, mean, I, I like, haven't specifically heard of anything like that. Of course, <laughs> I don't know about neuroscience or like, like high... high like super high tech like computing, like that. Recreate a computer as good as I'm sure brain. that will happen. So maybe we should just start using brains as computers. It'd be interesting. Yeah, you heard like, it. You heard it first here, folks. I like a brain powered car, please. Brain powered brain powered car. Yeah, I mean not like conscious, right? But just really, really high functioning. Right. So like cars would go from like 400 horsepower to like five brain power or something. Yeah. I have to be with that. I have to be with that. I mean, and it might not necessarily be a car, right? It's just like some kind of transportation system that gets you there in a unique way. It could hop there or something. I don't know. There we go. However, is most efficient. Well, I I, I could be down with that. I, I, that took me back. That's a, that's a very good idea. Um, I, I guess we can wrap up. Our, past. <laughs> yeah, seven eighty eight past. Cass is gonna be talking about that in just a minute. Um, that's gonna be his. I don't hate it segment because he's outspoken about it. He's like. Yeah, I agree with legalizing marijuana, but like it's a bad bill. It's not medical. They're right, and he'll, he's going to pitch it. He's like, okay. it's bad written, and they had a point, but I don't hate it. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to hear his take on it, though. Yeah, I hope I didn't just ruin the whole thread. Hopefully, it'll be wow. more complex and nuanced than that, <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, I think a good place to sign off is here with me and Reese. Um, Reese, let's think. It's Thursday. You're going to be able to do Monday, you think? Probably, yeah. Okay, we'll hopefully be able to get everyone in the studio on Monday. Uh, here we're coming up with Cass. Pay me in equity. Pay me in equity. Watch me reverse out of dicks. Put some respect on my chick. Pay me in equity. Pay me in equity. Watch me reverse out of dicks. So, for those of you who are not trendy and don't keep up with current music, uh, that was a new Beyonce and Jay Z song that Cass is quoting incessantly at work, and it is now the theme song for his segment. I don't Hello, hate Cass. it. I don't hate it. The, I don't hate that theme song. I don't hate that. Th- what, what else don't you hate this week? I don't hate a lot of things, which is kind of the point. Um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty fiery, but on a lot of stuff, I'm pretty, like, just whatever. It's fine. I don't hate it. I don't have to like it, and that's the whole point of this segment. I don't hate it, Chandler. What don't I hate this week? Uh, I don't know. I, I, would, I would imagine it would be 788. So 788, the famous Oklahoma ballot initiative uh, that uh, legalized medicinal marijuana. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, I, I want to make some things very clear. First and foremost, I voted yes. Um, I think it's people's right to have marijuana. Uh, so if you want it, you go get it. I also... Um, you know, believe that it does have some medicinal purposes, particularly in the form of CBD. Um, I'm not a scientist, a horticulturist, or a weedawanaist. I don't know what you call someone who's an expert in weed. But uh, CBD oil has been proven to help a lot of people with epilepsy, people with chronic seizures. I think that it's a good pain management uh, tool for people who are popping Oxycontin all the time. Uh... It's certainly a lot healthier than opioids. It, um, you know, is good for people who are on chemo, who have uh, lethargy and a lack of appetite. It's great for that. But um, do I think that it's a good bill? No. I think it's, it's, it's preposterous that we have to sell it as medicinal because if it was medicinal, you'd get it at a pharmacy. It's not medicinal. This is for fun, and it should be for fun, and that's okay. You deserve it. It's your right. But we have to be intellectually dishonest with ourselves because the system is so corrupt and so broken that we can't have what we deserve, what is our right, without framing it as something medical. Now, I don't want to take away any of the power that this has given a lot of people in order to take their health into their own hands. But, I mean, if we, if, it's, if it was medicinal, it would be in a pharmacy. Do you think that's, that's out of the question? Uh, no, no, I, I think you're right. Yeah, okay. And I don't hate it. I don't hate the bill. It's a fine bill. It's one of the best medical marijuana bills in the country. It's one of the loosest. It has... Very fringe, casual. Very. It's a very casual bill, which is good, because it'll increase access to something that people desperately want. I didn't say need. I chose the word want. Um, you know... You know something about want, Mr. Wantland. I know a lot about want. I want that land, and I'm going to get it one way or another. Um, but yeah, and so I don't hate it. 
I don't hate it. It's fine. It's intellectually dishonest, and I hate that we have to lower ourselves to that. I'm glad it passed. Don't misunderstand me. I voted for it. I'm really proud to have voted yes on the question, and I hope a lot of people have a lot of fun. I hope people, you know, get the care they need. But um, we, 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 we keep telling ourselves, I, I keep seeing posts on Facebook about how I haven't been able to apply for jobs because I haven't been able to leave my house because of anxiety, and now weed is going to save my life. And while I certainly believe that these people have anxiety and that they have real issues, weed is not like a silver bullet that's going to cure all of our state's horrible, horrible problems. It might help a little, but um, that's only on a case-by-case -case basis. And, oh, I'm also sick of people talking about the tax revenue. I hate it when people use financial incentives as a means to justify legislation. I think it's one of the most uh, disgusting things a person can do because what if marijuana would be really bad for the economy and, it's, and you still believe it's someone's right, would you vote no? Uh, I remember this being asked around... Uh, you know, when we were talking about legalizing gay marriage in, in 2015, people talked about how, oh, it'll be great for local economies because gay people will spend a lot on weddings, which, for one, is disgusting in its own right. But what if gay marriage was really bad for the economy? Do we vote no? What if, um, do we do programs just because they're good for the economy? No, we do them because they're the right things to do, because we have a moral spine. And, you know, again, don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's fine. I, it's great even. But, I, you know, we can do better. We should do better. It sounds like you like where we arrived at, but you don't like how we got there. I think that's exactly how I feel. Yes. Yes. And I, I wonder if uh, the kind of dishonest means by which 788 came about will go on to set a precedent of passing more, um, uh, I guess, traditionally left-leaning uh, um, ideals in conservative states. I wonder if that will be a pattern that might may continue in Oklahoma. Well, it's how conservatives pass their legislation, so, you know. Well, I think it was originally how we passed our, our legislation, and now it's just such a super majority, there's really not even a need to hide it. Well, Oklahoma is such a corrupt state to begin with, and that's not necessarily a, an onus on the Republicans. I think that Oklahoma politics are rotten to the core. That's why a good rule of thumb that I have, that me and my father have, is if you don't know who to vote for, vote for the person who's not the incumbent. Don't let people in Oklahoma feel safe in office because chances are, and this is not speaking for every politician, but chances are they don't deserve to be where they are because Oklahoma is a crooked, backward state. And they, again, this isn't a Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, right-wing, left-wing thing. This is purely about corruption. So, you know... And that's what, I, that's what I'm going to make this, this segment about. What I'd like to make it about in the future is Oklahoma-specific issues. So today I'm talking about 788 passing. Next week it might be about Sonic's cubed ice. So I've got a lot of feelings about the cubed ice. I don't hate it, but I've got some thoughts. So I think that wraps it up for today. Do you yeah. want me to talk more? No, no, no. I think that's All right. Uh, we like it. We like it. We want to hear more things that you don't hate in the future. I don't hate a lot of things, so there's plenty of material. We know you're very busy today, Cass. Thank you for stopping by to record that. No, we'll pleasure. We'll see you next week, man. <clears throat> so that wraps up our show for the week. Um, sound like a broken record. <clears throat> we got big guests still coming up. Um, we are pleased to have Reese on. First uh, time, just me and him today. I think uh, he'll be a great addition to our team. You can listen to us on Spotify, iTunes Podcast, SoundCloud. Of course, all of our videos will be up on YouTube. Um, some of the older ones might go away on the other platforms, but YouTube will always have everything. Uh, thanks for listening. Like our Facebook page, Political Bedlam. Um, yeah, you guys are the best. <laughs>